And speaking of like, you know, personal, right? Because we're we going to talk about it. Like the aerial situation, right? You know that we got to do our media stuff with the UFC regardless. That's like obligated. But Ariel, he's not like a person that we have to go through obligation, right, with, uh, for media. And I feel like with Ariel Hawani, he don't talk to me until he feel like talking to me. And when I got my win streaks going and I'm, and I'm doing my thing, I don't hear nothing from Ariel. It's not until I do something. It's some wild ass shit where my man pop up. Right. And people can be like, well, you know, that's just the business. No, fuck that. Because there's a lot of dudes that be getting on the show that ain't done shit. But they getting the clout, they getting the love. So why Ariel trying to fuck with me all of a sudden? Right. And my biggest thing is when people see me on that show, and I still never did it in the first place. Uh, because people right, because I was upset. And you can see it. I was upset. I was mad. And my biggest thing was when when I got on that, when I got on that show. I was just like thinking in the back of my head when he first or when he talked to me a second time against uh when I went up against Rizat and I had uh dust in my corner. You know, he asked me this little simple thing and it always stuck with me. He said, Well, you're not upset, are you? And I'm like, huh? He said, Well, you're not upset, are you? Because you know, the last time I talked to you was when you had the kick and it's been a while. So, you know, you're not mad, are you? And it's like he's trying to, he trying to like get something out of me. That was the last time I spoke to him. Leading from Razak, that fight to Vicente Luque. I think I didn't have wins and everything. Right? My career has been booming since then. So why talk to me now? So when, when people say, like, oh, bro, like you, you, you crying and all this other shit. Yeah, motherfucker, I'm crying and shit. Nigga, you see me in the crate, uh, cage crying and shit. Nigga, I'm I'm an emotional creature, bitch. Right? But it's still, but it's still, but it still don't change the fact what Ariel does, he plays on that, right? He wants you to act like that. Because I didn't even watch the show, but I seen a little highlight on my little Instagram. He got them girls on there wrestling and going back and forth. He want drama. He want that spill, right? So I thought I would just give him what he want. You know? Yeah. No, that was good. I feel like you kind of won that one all the way around because you kind of talked your shit to him and he couldn't even really post it. So, like, you gave him that, but but, like, you know, you ended up going viral off of that, and he ended up getting the, so, the short hey, end of the stick. Hey, on my mama, right? Because we keep it a buck over here. We ain't just going to talk crazy. Uh, MMA guru. <laughs> he came out with a clip, right? And so, I watched it, by the way. Right. Oh, you did, you did I watch did. it? I did. I saw it. Fucking hilarious. It was gold, right? But it's one thing that he was right about that, because leading up to that, because people were like, okay, if you were so upset, why did you do it? Why did you do it, right? Because it was a last minute thing, right? I didn't even think about it. It was just a last minute thing. Uh, when I had woke up the next day, right? You know, coming back home and shit like that. Uh, my my management, uh, Brian, had hit me up. He's like, "Hey man, check your phone. Like, you like you got an interview today." And I'm like, "Ah, oh, damn, right." And I'm just waking up, and he's like, "Yeah, you got Ari Hawani. Like, like check your phone. Like he's been trying to message you and all this other shit." And like you talking about Lily, four three minutes into the interview, so I, like, bro, I'm just waking up, getting up. You said less than an hour? No, 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 no. I'm talking about because when I just woke up, I'm checking my text. My my management, like, hey, like, hey, you got an interview in a like, couple minutes. Oh, a like, couple minutes. You been? Yeah. So Damn. I'm just like now getting up. But regardless of all that, though, I'm just like, you know, in my head, I'm like, bro, I don't want to do this, but fuck it. That's what I said. I said, fuck it. But with that being said, I can't allow, because even for, for myself, people going to play on that every single time. Right. Because they're going to look at me like, oh, OK, you know, th this guy is this. He doesn't have any type of. Uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Like like uh, knowledge when it comes to what he's upset about. I know exactly what I was, but I ain't had shit planned to say. I see. <laughs> you know, like like we plan this interview, right? Right. We plan this interview. So, like, you know, I'm, I have an idea of what I'm you know about to speak about. But with that, it's just like literally waking up like, all right, boom, now I'm on the phone with this dude, but now I'm just coming up with, you know, what I want to say to him personally. Like, hey, bro, I'm not really feeling like, you know, how you be treating us and shit like that. So when MMA Guru was like, hey, nigga, <laughs> hey, I got your back. I got examples for you. Because, look, I know the type of shit that he be trying to do and the type of slick shit that he try to be on, but I didn't have anything right there on the point, uh, like, on the spot to try to give examples about, right? And that's the thing about Eric Hawani. He keep facts on him, bro, Right? When it comes to date and numbers and shit like that, he going to try to hit you with something back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So if you're not prepared 
initially, then you are going to lose that battle. But I'm not trying to battle with you. I'm not trying to have a debate with you. I'm just trying to tell you, you ain't shit. That's it. It's, I don't know. Have some fucking respect, I feel like, if just to keep it, like, 100. Like, have a little mm -hmm. bit of respect, man. Like, you're not here to argue with the fighters. Like, these guys are fighters. Like, show them, in my opinion, like, show them the respect. Like, I'm not here to fucking argue with you and play, like, yeah. a card of, like, oh, like, we can argue and, like, like, but you can't that's kick my he, ass, though. It's, like, it's that's ridiculous. What, that's what he wants. Yeah. And also, on top of that, right, so he's trying to pretend that he didn't message me, or not message me, but he didn't comment back or reply back. Now I know I said, so I started, right? So Eric Hawani was feeling some type of way. And like, he was like, you know, if you come at the King, you better come correct. Like he was, I mean, he was talking his, his good shit, you know, but me just trying to get his attention, right? I said, hey, you better stop. We're going to change your name to Ariel Hawani, right? Just fucking with him, you know what I'm saying? He said, and if, 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 I'm, if I'm right, if I'm correct, whatever, if I can remember back right, he was like, bro, hey, this ain't the time. Like, pretty much, like, this ain't the time to be fucking with me type shit, right? Because he owned one. But never, you know what I'm saying, never said nothing back. But when I brought that up, even though I probably said the wrong thing, he act like he didn't know. Because it was him, had the little blue check mark and everything. But I'm not finna, I'm not finna go back and forth with you and make my stuff look even crazy, right? Because I ain't think, no, 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 for real. Because I ain't think it was going to blow up like that. I thought it was going to be like a little, little weak-ass interview and boom, and go, do, go ahead and do his own thing. But then everybody just started posting about the shit. I guess that's what happened when you become number eleven in the world. All the bullshit you start doing start going viral. <laughs> yeah, or when you put Ariel in his place. I think a lot of people are just like they don't like Ariel low key, but they don't really have the words to say it. So anytime a fighter kind of like calls him out for certain things. So let's just talk about it though. Uh, yeah, you felt like he wasn't showing you love. I have something to say about that. Um, I thought like it's kind of sad that this happened. In my opinion, in my opinion, like it's a little sad that this happened because. When you had your spinning kick, he had you on ESPN, that interview. I went back and watched it. And yes, I, thought, yeah. I thought it was a beautiful interview. I thought that mm -hmm. he, he brought your girl on there. You're holding your baby. He kind of like talked about you a little bit and like broke your story. Like, I don't know how you don't like, like, you know, fall for a guy like and want, want to like, you know, continue to like push your story after that. He did it with Joe Pfeiffer. Okay. Yes. We'll put that out mm -hmm. there. You know, Joe Pfeiffer is a good guy, but I'm just going to put that out there. And, um, you know, so that was that. He didn't really have you on after that. And then, like you said, I think the next time was after, like, Dust, you know. And, and so it's just kind so, of uh, it's kind then, of sad. And, like, then, what? And, then, and then why do you think it was the third time? Because is the pool because party. Is it because I won? Or is it because cause you gave a good example on probably why he had me on his show? And why was party. that? The pool party. Yeah. I got to do shit that's not MMA related to get on an MMA show. What's going on with that? Because my thing is, too, I'm trying to build my platform and I'm trying to do what I'm doing. But my thing is, I start to realize when I build my platform on my own, I don't need these guys. I don't need Eric Hawani. And people are like, man, he got a million subscribers. Those million subscribers, quote unquote, whatever, they already know who I am. That's not a newer audience to me, right? That's not like me going on uh, CNN or me going on the Good Morning Show, right? Where there's a new audience and a new branch of people, kids and old, you know, old folks, whatever seeing me for the first time. These MMA heads, they know who the fuck I am. If they like me, they like me. If they don't, they don't, right? So regardless of him pushing me or not on his platform, ain't going to do shit for me unless I'm trying to actually reach that target audience, right? But other than that, bro, I'm good. Yeah, and, like, he, his interviews don't go that crazy, if I'm just being dead honest. Mm -hmm. Like, I've looked at the numbers on some of them. I mean, it does good, and uh you know gets a few k or something like that sometimes depending on the guy like 10k 20k but it's not it's nothing crazy i don't see like a lot of promotion on their uh page as well they post you once or twice out of the interview and then it's it's done with so yep. i mean it's there for a day or two and then it, it moves on and boom on to the next right yeah versus not to even highlight myself but you know over here like other podcasts they break it all down into a bunch of clips you know what i'm saying they really kind of push your story and mm -hmm. I, I just feel like that that interview or like that uh you know aerial show isn't really the best for fighters anymore like they used to think it was with a mm -hmm. lot of the media you can do these days with your own social Ariel media. Hawani, Ariel Hawani said it best like he he ain't taking that bullshit no more right he he the big boss in in his eyes and his imagination and right? that's definitely one so, of the issues too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. instead of trying to have a conversation, he he ready to debate right. So I'm just like, hey, we can just let it go. 
Because like even MMA Guru said, instead of admitting to what he does wrong, he he's trying to like, oh, no, 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 no. Give me an example. Give me an example. I'm not going to go. Because you know them examples, nigga. You know better than I do. Right. right? But you want you want to have a back and forth. And you and you really trying to go viral now. Right. Just try to get me upset and, and, and out of character. Right. So, you know. But like I said, I know for next time. You know, I know for next time. Yeah. <laughs> Tell tell uh, Brian Butler next time he sees Ariel in his DMs or me, yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to give yeah. it to me, please. Yeah, give it to you. Come on, every time, please. You know what I'm you saying? You definitely getting the first interview all the time. I mess it, I like mess I said, no, Brian. Be honest with you, I think there's not a lot of stuff I would have got done with your help. You Without so? your help, like I know so. Oh yeah, bro. I like they 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 watch what we do. Yeah. So one of the guys that work with the UFC, like they knew about my little RV and everything. So oh, really? They had to, yeah, so they oh, pay yeah. attention. They keep they keep tabs, right? Yeah. But I find it funny because I find it funny because there's no other MMA outlet, right? Media that fucks with me besides you. Yeah, and I'm but, oh, but watch, but watch when I do what I do, everybody gonna try to attack. And I'm really fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's because what pisses it, me it, off. Not just MMA media. I want to mess with the media. I want to be seen in a different light. I want to, you know, be on on the big shows uh, eventually one day, right? Yeah. But but MMA media showed me they not loyal, right? Uh, uh uh Once you take a couple L's or you do whatever, they 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 quit to, you know, what I'm saying, oh man, we don't know what he did or we don't know what he doing, right? And we don't care. So my biggest thing is don't come now now that I'm shining and I'm winning, because this is gonna con continue to happen. With y'all or without y'all, right? So I'd rather build with a platform where, like I said, when you only got one place where you can get the source, you won't have a lot of people migrate to that one thing. Right, right. That makes sense. Yeah, I've been noticing that too. Something I didn't notice before is like when a fighter does like one or two interviews, it gets a lot more attention than if you do like six or seven. The fans and don't really see all it. over the place. And I think the algorithm can't even like comprehend it when like they type you in on YouTube. Like they can't even differentiate between seven different like interviews, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But yeah. if there's like two, it'll it'll pop up like both of them. So yeah, it's I think it's better that way. And I want to say this because bro, we got a lot to say. All right, uh, like with what I'm posting, it's obvious that like what the fuck's going on? Like, um, and I don't even mean to like be so negative in a way, but I just gotta say it. Like, I made three posts, right? I made the post about you calling out Kevin Holland, I made the post about you going to St. Louis, and then um I made another post about how you got the knockout, right? Making him quit. Those are three obvious viral moments that any media outlet needs to be posting. Like, like that's the job, right? You you want the viral moment. And just to keep it 100 again, the women didn't, she didn't even show up to the uh, press conference because she, she was in a war. So you were the only one there on the UFC's press conference. Like oh, the one really? That, I didn't know that. Yeah, the no, one I the UFC it. posted on the channel, it was only uh -huh. yours. Oh, wow. And so- what I'm getting to, long story, is like MMA Junkie only posted you talking shit to Kevin Holland. Nobody really, MMA Fighting didn't post anything about you other mm -hmm. than your win. Mm -hmm. I'll give it up to Full Send. They posted the best one, you going to St. Louis, and then mm -hmm. it was me, but I posted three. So it's kind of, I just don't understand when you're the only content and you kind of stole the show, how they still don't even like want to listen to your interview or post you it's it's kind of like uh disheartening to be it, honest it is it, it's, it's controlled i'm gonna say that right it's controlled because even then like uh they 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 keep my interview short too i don't i don't like to do the long, i mean i'm doing it with you because i'm comfortable with you i like you bro and i like how you do uh do your interviews but them other dudes I, them those the questions they don't ask you don't even feel real so it's like i can't even give your ass a real answer right uh uh, but they they don't give me the long extent, you know, interviews. Like for me, like you said, with this being a co-main event, this being a rank fight, this being over somebody who is respected amongst all mixed martial artists across the globe. They don't fuck with me, bro. <laughs> so, and that's the thing. I do I become upset about it, right? Do I keep crying about the shit? I cry about it one time. That's it. I give I give one tear. But then it's time to move on, bro, and, and, and start knocking these boys out. Continues. That's it. Maybe the only thing I really can take on that, if they're really trying to, like, shadow ban you, if you will, is that you're just not industry. You're just, you're like, like Nate. Yeah, Davis too raw. Yeah, 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 yeah. A too, little, little too raw. <laughs> We're working on it, though. We're yeah. working on it. I no, but, but if you if you become industry, you're just like everyone else. 
And mm, that you know is, what I'm saying? True too, right? Yeah. So mm. I think like, and you make my job easy in a way because like it's easy to post shit from you. You know, you're different. You do you do like funny things. You're a funny guy. Um, you're also a skilled fighter. So there's a lot to like. You make it pretty easy, I will say. You know, just mm. listen to a Joaquin Buckley interview, and you probably get like two or three sound bites out of it. It doesn't even like I don't even need to know who it is or what. Right, right, right. It's right. just kind of <laughs> it's just kind of stupid how they don't post you. But um, we'll just get off of that because I don't want to keep going. Um, unless you have something to say, or you want me to move on. No, 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 you good, you good. Okay. But yet again, like I said, it's just w with the things that we talk about, they watch it, bro. Don't get it twisted. What we doing right now, as soon as you post that, there's going to be somebody in the UFC watching and, make, and taking note and taking it to somebody else. That's just how I feel. That might not be happening, but I feel like that's happening. So yeah, you know, sometimes I got to be careful, but my thing is I never say anything out of pocket that's disrespectful. I just want, I just want to eat. <laughs> that's it. I'm just like the next dude that 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 that's just in the lunchroom, bro. I'm just trying to eat. And I feel like, you know, uh, as long as the UFC is allowing me to continue to fight, they doing me a favor. Cause let me do the rest. Y'all ain't gotta do nothing else for me. Just just let me fight. Let me go out there and, and compete and let me show the world how great I am. Yes. And that's and all I need from you. I was like trying to keep tabs. So, you know, I thought that the UFC was showing you some love. They posted you. Um, they, they literally cover you like everyone else. That's like the difference here is I feel like some of these media outlets aren't covering you the mm -hmm. same way they would cover other people. You throw Joe Pfeiffer in that co-main event. Boy, that boy be blowing up right now. You kidding me? That so, boy be starring in, 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 that, in that, uh, uh, that role house with Conor McGregor. You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, that's all I got to say about that really. But, um, mm -hmm. also I want to give you a chance because I didn't really like how Ariel was cutting you off and shit like that. You're now saying you didn't have any fucking examples. I ain't had no example. I, I keep it a buck. I ain't had. I'm like, damn, bro. I really ain't got nothing. <laughs> but regardless, though, that that wasn't that wasn't even my like I said. That wasn't even my intentions to get in a debate with him. It's just what he said before. Are you not upset that it's been this long that I talked to you? That was the last thing he said to me on that interview that I had uh, with him last against Rizal. So now I gave him what he wanted. Yeah, I'm a little upset, bro. It's been this long that we talked. Right. And oh, when you hit up, you, you can call your man. Now you're trying to pin me against my man. <laughs> that was fucking, bro. The low key stuff in that, in that, like, yeah, doing that pin you against Brian. It's like, bro, Brian's catching strays for what? Like, it, it's not his job to hit you up, Ariel. But, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, I have an example and tell me what you think. Uh, did you ever watch that Jamal Hill interview with him or no? No, nah, I mean, well, so. The thing, I'm not going to watch everything that he do, but I seen and I see it, right? But I haven't watched the whole clip, though, you know, but I, I definitely heard about it, though, especially with everything that's coming up. Because, like I said, it's not like I exposed him. I haven't exposed. Everybody know this. He's been doing it for years since he's been in, in, in the damn business. That's why the UFC don't even lie his ass in the motherfucking room, right? But, like you said, the reason why people fuck with it so much is because somebody said it on the show. Right. And then look, now you got other people. Regardless if I'm I wasn't able to give the dates, guess what? The internet don't ever forget. Right. It's yeah, they be pulling up all the clips and the they fucking comments. And shit. Up everything. So they're gonna do the work for me. I ain't gotta right. I ain't gotta go back and forth with you. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. you don't even have to comment on this. Let me just let me just put this one out there. Uh because I don't like how like it came off as you didn't really get an example out there. And and so if there's no example, then he must win by default. So I'll put it, I'll put an example out there. Um, with Jamal Hill, the short, the short version of that is when Ariel had him on his show. Once again, it's sad. I don't like this, dude, because he highlights your guys' beautiful stories in a way. He did it with Jamal, too. He he talked about, you know, you're going to be champion. This guy said he was going to be champion, like predicted it and all this stuff. It's a great story. And then he goes on to, like, just throw a little shade. And so what happened is Jamal won the title. And then Ariel, the next day on Monday on his podcast, said that uh, – who who is it? Yuri Prohaska is still the best mm. two hundred fiver in the world. Even though, um, yeah, right. Even though Jamal had just won, he said Yuri Prohaska mm. is still the best in the world. And then he also said that like Pereira has a chance at beating Jamal. Essentially, how, that's how Jamal took it. He was saying that mm -hmm. Pereira could be a double champ. And is, so, is this is this Ariel speaking to Jamal at the time? This was Ariel. Okay, so Jamal didn't come on on Monday because he was traveling. Mm -hmm. So he was traveling back from Brazil, right? Ariel had Happy a show on won. Monday Happy and was won, talking yeah. about the recap. Mm -hmm. Jamal listened to the recap, took offense to it, yeah. came on the Monday show uh -huh. and was like, hey, like, 
calling him out left and right. Like you said this, you said that um, Yuri's still the best un uncrowned 205 pound champ. You said that Alex could move up. You said these things. And then Ariel again is like arguing with him and stuff. And long story short, right? Jamal keeps calling him out. So then Ariel says this, he goes, all right, you want to keep it a hundred with me then? I didn't say anything to you about like, he goes, let's keep it a hundred then. I didn't say anything to you. He got bucked. He got, hey, hold on. I'm a bit far right. He got bucked with Jamal through the screen, huh? Yeah, yeah, he did. All right, let's keep it 100, then. <laughs> yeah. He said, let's keep it 100, then. <laughs> hey, look. And hey, be honest with you, I, I have no problem with wait, somebody wait, can, I, can I finish it real quick? Is that okay? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, okay. Go ahead. I was just going to say that he said, let's keep it 100, and went on to highlight Jamal Hill basically saying when Dana White slapped his wife, he went on to say, like, Oh, Jamal, you said that that she should have not hit him and then he would have not hit her, basically. Like, two wrongs don't make right. Like, let's both keep our hands to ourselves. And he starts highlighting this out of nowhere yeah. because yeah, Jamal's yeah. calling him out for disrespecting his win. So yeah. and so he's like, you want to keep it 100? Like, you want to, like, call me out that's on my good. shit? Then let me call you out on your shit. But that's not yeah. your job to call him out on his shit about that. He can think whatever he wants. And then basically he said, like, um, well, maybe that's where you and I differ then. Yeah, insinuating yeah. that he doesn't think that that like a, wo a woman should be hit by a man of course jamal doesn't think a woman should be hit by a man he has no, a, daughter, no, no. a daughter yes exactly right and and just going on that right so for him to switch it to that topic out of nowhere is crazy we talking about me like you said in my fight in my reign how we getting towards another man in his business and what he's doing right uh, and even if I was to say something uh, uh, of that nature, you know what I mean? That's just something that I that I said outside or whatever. Don't bring that up trying to insinuate that, that I like to see women get beat. Because that's what he's trying to say. Because that's what they that's how they try to do Jamal, too. Don't get it twisted. TMZ, when they posted that uh, domestic violence bullshit, you know, abuse, they try to make it uh, turn like, you know, Jamal was beating on this girl when it was really just him and his brother had a situation. So with Eric Hawani doing that, he know what he was trying to do. He yeah. know what he was trying to do. Yeah. And uh, because you said weaponized fighters against the UFC. And so what he wanted him to do is basically admit to that Dana White shouldn't have hit his wife. And yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, you were yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah. He he was trying to he was trying to say that, you know, Dana Dana White wanna be in the uh, power side with his girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and like he, like you said, he works for fucking Dana in, in a sense. Like Dana's the employer. Like he doesn't mm -hmm. want to come out and say that, you know? So that, that's kind of what that was. But that's an example for Ariel. If he wants right. to know the weaponizing fighters, that's he, an example. But see, and, and I, I don't mind you like doing it, but you don't need to do that because yeah. he know what he's doing. You think he already knows? He, I don't think I know. <laughs> that motherfucker know what he's doing. And guess what? And like I said, if you are going to go at Ariel, right? And like I said, for me, I should have never went on there in the first place. But regardless, I did. So as a man, I got to just stick up with it and live on uh, on the fact that I did do that. But regardless, though, when you do come to somebody and you do confront them, make sure you do hit their ass with something. And I wish I would have. I wish I would have been more prepared for that interview to really get on his ass. You know what I mean? But like you said, he was saying some old slick shit, but I ain't want to be on that motherfucker no way. Right? I'm like, Let, let's just get this shit over with. Let me say what I need to say and go on about my business. Right? But if I would have caught on at the time, you know what I'm saying? I get hit upside my head. Shit, you know what I'm saying? Girls be working a little, you know, slow. But then I'd be picking up on shit like, did that motherfucker say? Because what he say? That motherfucker said, uh, he said, man, you know, I, I guess I'll be getting hit upside my head too much. Maybe I forget. Yeah. I'm like, okay, okay. You try to be funny, motherfucker. <laughs> you went right past it. You didn't notice it. I didn't notice it yeah, either. Yeah, but yeah. Shout, out, shout out to MMA Guru on that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he funny. I ain't gonna lie. Big, big shout out to him. Because yeah. he my he one of my biggest haters, right? I don't care yeah. nobody say you can be one of my biggest haters, but if you funny with your shit, we good, bro. 